Hey guys, I'm back again, this time with an episode on setting usernames. This is something that isn't really too hard, but is definitely necessary for your multiplayer game. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I have, in fact, finally made a Discord. So if you guys have any questions about, you know, uh, multiplayer coding, Bolt in general, or, you know, you just want to uh, get in touch with the community, I highly recommend you to go check it out. I'll leave a link in the description. So without further ado, let's get it started. Okay, so what I was kind of picturing for this was that in our menu scene, when the player first starts, they get a panel that says, welcome, please set your username, and they maybe type in something right here, and they click OK, and then that's how their username is set. So to do that, let's make a panel. I'm going to set the panel background to maybe a grayish, and I actually do not want it to be transparent but I do want it to be smaller. So maybe we can say, I guess we can have it stretch. We can say how much is 50? Maybe maybe like 60 from the left and right. Maybe like 100 from the, not 100. Maybe 60 from the top and bottom too. So let's start first with a input field. And you can choose either one. I'm gonna go with Text Mesh Pro since we have it imported. And while we're here, let's rename things to set username panel and we can probably leave this as input field I'll just say set username input field to be clear and if you go into play mode you can actually see that this will work you can type things into it hello world so we just need a way to set this string to the username with that in mind if you scroll down here there is a function well there's four things all of which are helpful, the one we'll be looking at is on value changed. Of course, whatever we do from here, it's going to need to be a function. And since we already have a script called menu, let's just make the function in there for simplicity. Okay, since we have a lot of bolt stuff, and also since this is one of the first things that we do, I'm just going to put this function right below the start, but you can put it wherever. So let's make it a public void. And you guys know how I like my descriptive function name, so I'm going to name this on set username value, if I can spell, changed. Like that. Within this function, let's make it take a string as an argument, and we can name it something like input. Then, let's simply for now write a print input. Save that, and then let's head back into Unity, and in our input field, let's attach that function right here on this on value change. So we want to drag in the canvas, select from menu, and if you see here, there are two categories. There is static parameter, and then there's also a dynamic one. So dynamic is cool because it lets you interact with what the user inputs, which is exactly what we want in this case. And with that selected, if we go to our console, we should be able to see us print something. Uh, low. Perfect. So the way I've actually gone about setting the username is instead of having the button set the username, I just set the player pref right here. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this right here. Player pref dot string username equal to input. And we can actually comment out this start function. So now every time the user changes something, it'll set their username to it. And the button, all the button will do is simply close the panel. So assuming the username types in exactly what they want, the end product will still be the same. They'll have no idea that their username is changing every time they type something. But when they close the panel, their username should be what they want it to be. With that in mind, all we need to do is make a button that closes the panel. So one fancy way that I like to make buttons is I'll actually make it just a simple text. And let's go and kind of move it to where we want it to be. Whoops. So we drag the bottom right down there-ish. This down there. I also usually like to center my text both vertically and horizontally. And let's scale this text down to something like, it's probably a little bit too small, maybe 20-ish. 20 20-ish 20 is probably fine. That's what it'll look like. And let's say, okay, something like that, maybe go, go probably works. And now that we have this text, we want to add a 
button component. So now when we hover over this text, it should act like a button, just without the kind of background that I don't think would look very good in this case. And again, all we want to do with this button is simply close the set username panel. So we drag that in and go to game object set active false. And guys, I know it sounds crazy, but that actually should be it. One thing we do need to do though, is if you remember, we also set our username in the player joined event in the last video. And funny thing is, I can't remember doing this twice, but evidently I did. So we just need to comment this out. And now the menu should be the only place where our username value is set. So with all this saved, let's go test it. So here I am and we shoot and yay, Brett scored five points. And let's see if it works the other way around. And yay, test build, that's what I named the other one. It works. Hooray. Of course, there's various cleaning up things you can do. One that I'll go through with you is that we probably don't want the user to set their name every time they start the game. That's a pretty easy fix. Let's just go back into our menu script. And we actually will want this start function again, so we can uncomment the comment out. But we don't want this stuff, we can just delete that. And now we just need a reference to the set username panel. I'll put it right below the serverless panel, public game object set username panel. So now we just say if player prefs dot get string username is equal to null set username panel dot set active true if it's not null meaning that the username is populated already set username panel dot set active false this is all kind of long so if we wanted to write that shorthand we could say set username panel dot set active and we want to set this active based on this argument based on whether the username is equal to null or not so we can actually just say, we can just copy and paste this argument here and put it into the set active function. So that's just a cleaner way of writing the same thing. So once we save and head back into Unity, don't forget to link up the username panel. And if we did it right, even though it's set active right now, once we start the game, it should be set inactive. And yay, that's exactly what it does. A couple more things that you guys might want to do is have a button that lets the user change their username. And that's pretty simple. All it is is just a button that sets this panel active, which is pretty much just the inverse of this go button, which I might as well name go button while we're at it. And of course, you guys can make it look prettier however you see fit. But for now, I think that's pretty much all we need to know for setting usernames. So hooray! But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, I hope you found it helpful. And again, if you have any questions, I highly recommend you go check out my Discord. And while you're at it, maybe hit the notification bell for this channel. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next episode.